G'day friends, it's Andrew here from Nature's Image Photography with another look at the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. And in this video I want to look at how you can go about customising the camera to suit your needs. I did some similar videos way back when about the original G9, and they were some of the most popular videos I ever made about that camera. Because if you're thinking about buying a new camera, you like to know what you're in for. And if you've already bought a new camera and you encounter a new menu system for the first time, you might like a few pointers to help you get started. So in my first couple of weeks with the G9 Mark II, I made a number of changes to the layout to suit my style of photography, essentially to make it more similar to how I've been running my G9 and other Lumix cameras in the past. And now I've gone and done the unthinkable. I've done a full factory reset and taken the camera back to how it was when I first took it out of the box. Now I'm going to do it all again, but this time I'm going to record the customization so you can see how I did it. Now I'm not suggesting you're going to want to set your camera out exactly the way I do, but I hope this will give you some idea of what's possible and help you get to know the new menu system along the way. If you're new to my channel, well, I'm a big fan of Lumix cameras and I plan to keep on bringing out more content on the G9 II and other models as well. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and if you really learn something useful here, you can always thank me with a coffee, and I'll put a link in the information below. Now let's get started with my take on customising your Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. So on any camera I own, I like to have my shutter speed at the front and my aperture at the back. The, the Lumix cameras by default have the aperture at the front and the shutter speed at the back. Um, but happily this is one of those things that's customizable. So uh, every time I buy a new camera, uh, one of the first things I do is go and uh, reverse those dials. So all I have to do to do that is um, go into the menu and go down to the third section. Uh, and you'll see this is divided into sort of subheadings. The one I want is operation, and low down on the, the first page there, I've got dial set. Now if I click into that, uh, the dial settings are organised into a few different set options, um, and you can see there the different layouts for uh, program, aperture, shutter priority and manual. Uh, and the one I want is set 3 here, uh, because on set 3 your shutter speed goes to the front and your aperture goes to the back. So all I have to do is click set, and now that is all organized for me. So I just have to turn the front dial now for the shutter speed and the back dial for the aperture, which is just the way I want it. I always like to have constant preview enabled uh, so that my screen gets brighter and darker as I change my settings. I shoot in fully manual mode with the aperture and shutter speed and the ISO all set by me. Um, so with constant preview, the screen gets brighter and darker to help guide you very quickly to uh, the right setting so you get the exposure right first time every time. But it's not set by default, uh, so I need to go in and set that up. Now I'm going to uh, go into the menu again, uh, go across, and this time I want to stay in that third section but go down to the chapter that says uh, Monitor Display, uh, and you can see up here there's a heading called Constant Preview. All I have to do is go in there and turn that on uh, and now when I get out of there you'll see that as, my, as I change my settings the screen gets brighter and darker. So it's an extra really useful guide to help me get my exposure right first time every time. I like to use back button focus for my photography. I learned how to do it on the G9. I actually made a YouTube video about it uh, and now I've become quite accustomed to it. Uh, so I like to use back button focus and the G9 Mark II comes with uh, the, uh, the back button, the AF on button, already assigned to focus, but the front button is too. And to really make the most of back button focus, I want to switch that focus off uh, or disable it from the front button. Uh, that's very simple. I just have to go into uh, the menu again, go up to the AF section and then go up looking for where it says shutter AF on uh, and I just have to turn that off. So autofocus was already enabled to the AF on button at the back. Now I've disabled it from the front button. So the focus is only going to happen using that back button, which is the way I like it.
So now I want to look at a feature that I don't actually use. This is in response to a question from a viewer after I made my first video on the G9 Mark II. He wanted to know if the uh, creative filter uh, settings were still available on the G9 Mark II that we had on the G9. And that got me curious because uh, by default on the G9 we had a little um, touch tab here that we could uh, tap to, to bring up the creative filter option. Uh, and or at least on the, the G9 that I've got, uh, it wasn't there by default. So I was curious and I went in looking and I did find that here in the menu, uh, the third part of the menu, just underneath Q menu settings, you've got touch settings. In touch settings, you can go down to touch tab and turn that on. And now, just like we had on the G9, you've got this little touch tab here that brings up uh, a few different uh, functions and one of those is the creative filters so you can go in there and you can enable your different creative filters if you want to uh, you've got um, expressive you've got retro and a few others there so if you like that feature you can turn it on it wasn't turned on by default uh, with uh, the model I had but uh, quite possibly when you get yours it might be uh, but I actually made a, a video about the G9 on how to switch it off because I don't really like the touch tab. I, kept, I found that I was too often uh, bumping it uh, and turning on features I didn't want to turn on. Just walking around with the camera in my hand I'd, I would knock that uh, and it would cause me a few troubles. So I went in and turned it off but if you want it on you can. I'm going to turn mine off again because I don't want to use it. Uh, but the touch tab is available and you can get to your creative filters uh, via the touch tab if you want to enable that. There is another way to do it and if you watch towards the end of the video uh, I'm going to show you something that might interest you when we talk about the Q menu. Now I want to look at your burst shooting options and uh, to enable burst shooting on the camera uh, you'll see the first three positions on the release mode dial. The first dial is uh, just one shot per press, it's just a single shot. When you go to uh, the second position on the dial, uh, then you're looking at your regular high-speed burst, uh, and you've got some options for that. And then when you go to the third spot on the dial, that's where you can select how you're going to use your super high-speed options. So uh, these are the ones, these are where you go to select them. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to choose uh, the way you want to operate them in the menu. So now to choose my burst modes, uh, we're going to be in the first part of the menu this time, but we have to go down to second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth screen uh, to, to find the burst shot setting heading. So we come down here and select that. Now, burst shot one, that's that second position on the, um, the release mode dial, uh, is by default set to high speed burst. You can go in there and you can choose medium or low speed burst. Uh, now that's using the mechanical shutter, so these are the, the slower burst rate options, uh, and I prefer to keep that at high, which will be at uh, 14 frames per second if I'm in uh, single autofocus, or down to 10 frames per second if I go to continuous. So I'm going to leave that where it is. When I go into the burst shot 2 setting, I have a couple of options, depending on whether I'm going to shoot single autofocus or continuous. You can see here uh, I have the option of 75, 60 or 20 frames per second and I have that option with the pre-burst as well. Uh, but I don't shoot in uh, single autofocus very often. Because I use back button focus I tend to keep my camera set to continuous focus all the time. So if I turn the camera now to uh, continuous autofocus uh, and go back into that part of the menu, you'll see now that I don't have the 75 option. I've got the SH60 uh, or the SH20 and then with the pre-burst option too. So I'm going to go down to the SH60 pre. That's the option that uh, when I half press the button, the camera starts taking photos before I actually press. So uh, I'll get whatever I shoot plus uh, a certain period of time from before I press the button as well. So I'm going to click that and now that's been enabled to my um, burst shot too. Now one more thing while we're in this part of the menu, with your pre-burst you have a choice of choosing your recording time. So here I've got uh, the choice of half a second, one second or 1.5 seconds. Now I leave that at half a second for now 
because uh, I'm thinking at 60 frames a second, if I have to, uh, if I go to one second, um, that means remembering we're in pre-burst, when I press the button, uh, I'm going to get everything I shoot plus an extra 60 shots from before I press because that's one full second at 60 frames a second. If I go up to 1.5 seconds, that's going to be 90 shots. So for now, let's assume my reflexes are fast enough I can get away with half a second of pre-burst. That'll be 30 shots uh, of pre-burst plus whatever I, get, I shoot after I press the button as well. So that's my pre-burst uh, option set up. And now it's simply a matter of, uh, now that those have been preset in the camera, uh, just going, turning this dial to choose the burst option I want. Now I want to look at uh, customising uh, function buttons on the camera and a lot of the buttons uh, can actually be reassigned so almost any button on the camera can be uh, reassigned to do something different to what's there by default but for the most part I'm happy with the way the camera's laid out. But you do have these two uh, fully customisable function buttons at the front of the camera and these are the ones I'd like to look at. Um, these are pretty much a blank slate. You can choose the function you want and you can assign them uh, to those two buttons. Uh, so instead of having to go through the menu looking for particular functions, you can have them at your fingertips there with a the press of a button. Now there are two ways to get into assigning these function buttons. If there's nothing already uh, assigned to a button, you can start by just pressing the button down for a few seconds and it brings up the function button assignment menu. Uh, the other option is just to go through the menu. So I'm going to look at both. Uh, but of course, uh, once, when you're looking at the back of the camera, you won't be able to see me pressing this button. So what I'm going to start doing uh, is press that button for a couple of seconds uh, and then you'll see the rest of the process in action. So I start by putting my finger on that button at the front and I'm just going to hold it down for a couple of seconds. And you can see right away uh, a big list of uh, what's available to me to assign to that button uh, immediately goes on display from the menu. So now it's simply a matter of going through and looking for the function I want. And there's an awful lot of them, so it can take me a while. Uh, so uh, I might have to do a little edit here uh, to get me a bit quicker to where I'm going. So right down at the very bottom of the list, I finally found Live View Composite. Um, now this is a new function on the, uh, the G9 Mark II that I'm really keen to have a play with. And I'd like to be able to get there in a hurry because I'd like to make a video about this and I don't want to have to go searching for it every time in the menu. So I've now assigned that to the bottom button uh, on the front of the camera. So one of those customizable functions is now enabled. Uh, and now to press that, whenever I press that button, it'll straight, take me straight to the Live View Composite uh, section of the menu. Now once you've got something already assigned uh, to a button, you can't just uh, bring it up by uh, pressing the button and holding it down because there's something already assigned there. So uh, the other option if you want to change the function on a button is to just go in, uh, directly to the menu and get, get in via that way. So uh, if I go down again into the third part of the menu, uh, in operation, uh, there's a heading called function button set. And if I go in there, uh, setting in record mode, which is, which is for shooting, uh, it then brings up uh, a whole bunch of different, um, uh, it's basically a map of um, the, the buttons on the camera and how you can assign them. Now I'm going to work my way down through to where I get to, um, well here we are, the one, the one that's up there now. Uh, that's the top one. Remember I've already put Live View Composite on the lower button, so now I want to assign something to the top button. So I click on this one, uh, and once again I've got a bit of a search to find the feature I'm looking for, the one I'm after is near shift focus. And someone did ask this, me about this in the, um, the comments on my original video. You can see down here I've got a heading called AF on near shift. Um, and this function is one that if the camera's not sure whether it's meant to focus on a foreground or a background object, clicking near shift um, tells the camera to snap straight to the, the foreground. So that's a, a function I find really helpful when I've got a, a bird on a piece of grass but the camera keeps on insisting on focusing on the, uh, the tree behind. So now that that's been assigned to near shift, uh, I've got two functions uh, already now assigned to the front button and both of them I can access just with a tap of the button instead of having to go through the menu each time. 
So I'm just going to run you through uh, how to set up your high resolution mode uh, because there are a few options. Uh, and we start out in the menu uh, on the, the first section. We're going to go down, uh, we're on first page, which is image quality. And we're going to go down to the high resolution mode setting uh, heading. Uh, and here you've got a couple of options. You've got handheld high res. Uh, you can turn that uh, on or off. So that's a decision you'll need to make. If you're going to be using a tripod, obviously you'll turn it off. Uh, if you're going to turn it on, then you're relying on the, the very, very high uh, standard of image stabilization on this camera to, um, uh, to manage the, uh, the sharp image for you. Uh, picture quality. You can choose um, uh, a few different options. You can have raw plus fine. Uh, you can have fine. You can have raw on its own. Uh, and combined uh, means it just continues to use the same uh, picture quality settings you normally do in your, normally sh in your normal shooting. So that's where I tend to leave that one. Um, picture size, you can choose uh, between a couple of options. If you don't need a, a massive 100 megapixel file, there is a 50 megapixel file option. Um, simultaneously record normal shot. Now with, uh, with that on, the camera will shoot your uh, high resolution file, but also save just a regular size version. I find that quite handy, especially when, it, when I want to do comparisons in the, uh, the quality of detail between the small and the large version. So I leave that on. Um, two second delay. Uh, you can go in here and you can choose no delay, um, but uh, all the way up to 30 seconds and higher if you want to. Uh, no, sorry, 30 seconds is as high as it'll go, but you can go down all the way to no delay. I like to keep the delay function on. Um, even if I'm doing it handheld, I leave that on because then uh, I'm not actually pressing the button when the photo starts. I can press the button and take my um, uh, finger away from the button and just try to hold the camera as steady as possible and of course when you're using a tripod it makes sense to use the delay function as well so I just leave that at two seconds there. Uh, motion blur processing uh, in mode one if there's any movement in front of the camera remembering that the camera is going to take eight images uh, then that bit of movement is going to um, appear as, as eight slightly different positions uh, in the photograph. If you go to mode two um, the camera is going to try to eliminate that movement and where anything's moved in the photograph it'll just try to save one uh, version of that moving subject. Now the mode 2 I'm pretty sure doesn't work in handheld it'll only work when you're using a tripod but uh, mode 2 is, is very useful uh, when there's a bit of movement involved. Uh, mode 1 uh, is better for when you're working on a tripod and you've got a completely stationary subject. So having chosen your preferences it then becomes simply a matter of turning your release mode dial to one, two, three, the fourth position there, uh, and that brings up your high resolution shooting mode. And since we've come this far, let's actually take that photograph, even though it's just a, a dodgy photograph of a tree in my front yard. Uh, let's focus. Uh, we're in two second delay, remember. I'm going to press the button. There's that two second delay. The camera takes the eight images. Now it's merging them and it can take a few seconds for this to happen. Uh, and when it's done, you have your high resolution uh, mode photograph uh, ready to view. Let's bring it up here. There we go, so that's our high resolution uh, such as it is. Now I want to look at autofocus area modes and subject detection and we'll start with subject detection. If you have read any reviews you must surely know by now that the uh, G9 Mark II offers us some options we didn't have on the G9 uh, and we get to them in this first part of the menu. Uh, if you go across to the, uh, the AF section and you'll find a detecting subject heading. So click in there and you're going to find now that we have got human, animal, car and motorcycle. Now motorcycle and car we didn't have before. Also within a human and animal, uh, if you select animal, uh, in this case we go down to target parts and you've got a choice of animal body or animal body and eye. So some quite uh, specific area modes that we didn't have in the past uh, and you can select them here in the menu. Now if you find that this is a bit cumbersome, I have found a quicker way or what I think is a quicker way to, uh, to make these selections. Uh, so you can do it in the menu, but if you watch until the end of this video, uh, I'm going to show you uh, something that might interest you in the quick menu as well. Now having chosen your subject detection option, and we're going to go with animal body, uh, we get out of there, 
Uh, and when you're back to your normal shooting screen, this is the button you press to enable your autofocus area mode. Uh, and this screen will look quite familiar to G9 users. Uh, you've got your autofocus area mode options here. Uh, the difference is now you'll see that uh, we've got animal body selected. Uh, it's available on all the autofocus area modes, not just this one and this one, the way we had it on the G9. Now all of your autofocus area modes can be enabled for your subject detection. Uh, and turning that on and off is simply a matter of tapping the screen there. Uh, now you've got your autofocus area mode on its own. Tap this again and you've got your autofocus area mode combined with your subject detection, uh, the one we selected in the menu. It occurs to me that the rainbow lorikeets are making a lot of noise in my garden at the moment, so I can I hope you can hear me over the all the pesky nature sounds. Uh, but we'll continue on. Uh, now, what I want to look at is the uh, the quick menu, because you have a couple of options in how the quick menu is laid out, uh, and I have my preferences. Uh, there's another screen I'd rather use. So uh, to change the quick menu, uh, it's simply a matter of uh, still in this third section of the menu. Uh, a lot of the functions we're changing are all done in this third part. I go down to the section that says operation and the first heading on the dial there uh, is, uh, sorry, heading on the screen is the Q menu settings. So if I go in there, uh, you've got two different layout options. That's mode one and that's mode two. And that's actually the one I prefer to use. So if I just click into that and uh, get out of there, go to the quick menu, you see now we've got quite a different uh, quick menu option to, um, to what we had before. Now, you can actually change what features appear on the quick menu. You might not need all of these. Uh, so you've got um, white balance sensitivity, uh, but I shoot raw, so I'm not too worried about all this contrast and highlight and shadow stuff. So as time goes by, I'll customize my quick menu so that I can get quickly to the things I want most often, uh, not necessarily what's there by default. So. To change that, uh, I'm going to go back into the main menu, uh, still in quick menu settings, uh, and you'll see down here you've got uh, item customization for photo and for video. So I'm going to go into photo, uh, and there's that contrast one that I don't particularly need. So I'm just going to click on that, and it's going to invite me to go through and choose uh, whatever else I'd like to put in that spot. So I'm going to go down until I can find one of the features I would like to include in there. And this can take a while because there are so many options. Oh, image stabilizer, that's the one I'm looking for. So I'm gonna put that there. And now I can turn the image stabilizer on and off uh, with a touch of um, the screen in the quick menu. Now as time goes by uh, I'll add various different things into the quick menu until I've finally got it customized just the way I want it, uh, but uh, that just gives you an idea of how easy it is to alter the quick menu to suit your style of photography. One more thing while we're on the quick menu and uh, you can see that if I touch the screen I can select the item I want to use. Uh, turning the front and back control dials uh, both of those dials run you through the different values allocated to that menu item. You do have the option of changing the way that works, uh, and I'm going to have a look at that now. I think it's probably going to be the way I'd rather do it. So I'm going to go back to the menu, still in Q menu settings, and I'm going to look at front dial assignment, and you can see there it's assigned to value. If I put it to item, now I can uh, use the front dial to run through the different items and I can use the back dial to choose my different settings. To me that's a more user friendly way of doing it, it just seems to make more sense to my way of thinking. It doesn't necessarily have to match yours but uh, it's good to know the options there. And just like that, a couple of weeks has passed and my quick menu has evolved a little further. I thought you might be interested to see where I've ended up. And I'm not suggesting you're going to want to set your quick menu up the way I've set up mine. Uh, but it does give you an idea of how customizable it is to, uh, to suit your style of photography. Uh, so I've made some changes and I have a correction to make too because I did make a mistake uh, when I did that previous clip on the quick menu. 
Uh, so let's just go through what I've come up with now. Uh, I've got photo style, that was always there. Uh, white balance was there, ISO was there. I haven't found, found any need to take those away, so I've just left them where they were. Uh, when we come to image stabiliser, you saw me set that up before and I said it was for turning the stabiliser on and off. Uh, well I've now realised that uh, I can turn the stabiliser on and off of course uh, by turning the button uh, on and off on the lens. Uh, this function is designed to let me choose my image stabiliser option. So uh, when it's set to normal, uh, it stabilises left, right, up and down. Um, but if I want to do some panning, you have the option to set it to stabilise for left and right or stabilise it for up and down only, which means you can pan the camera without the, uh, the stabilisation system impeding what you're trying to do. So for most things I'll leave it on normal, but if I ever need to do some panning, uh, I've got quick access to those options there uh, in the, um, the quick menu. Now, we'll keep on going. Uh, picture quality was there by default. Uh, constant preview. I showed you how to set that up in the menu. Now I've decided to make it a feature on my quick menu, so if I ever need to turn it on and off in a hurry, uh, that's there uh, with easy access. Filter effect. I also showed you a little while ago how to uh, set that up in the camera uh, using the menu and uh, enabling it uh, that uh, uh, touch tab function. Well, I don't like the touch tab function. So for people who want to use filter effects without having to go into the menu and without having to mess around with the touch tabs, uh, there is the option of just enabling it here for the quick menu. So I thought I'd put that in there just to demonstrate that point. Uh, detecting subject. Now with this one I showed you that you had to go into the menu before to detect your subject but you don't actually. You can set it up in the quick menu so that you can choose between human, animal, car and motorcycle uh, and then you can go down and with human you can choose human um, body or human eye and face and with animal you can do the same. You can go down to eye and body or you can go to body only. So you can actually set your um, subject detection here in the quick menu without having to go into the menu to do it. I think that's a quicker and easier way to get there if you do a lot of uh, people and wildlife photography. Um, now we'll keep on going across silent mode. I hardly ever use silent mode, in fact very very rarely, but because I hardly ever use it I can never remember where to find it in the menu. Uh, so now when I do need it I don't have to go into the menu, it's here for me in the, um, uh, the quick menu. And then you've got your birth settings, uh, you've got your aspect ratio. That's everything I've got to show you in the quick menu at this stage. Um, this might be the final evolution of my quick menu. And as I said, I'm not suggesting that you want to set yours up the way I've set up mine. But I hope it gives you some idea of just how versatile the layout of this um, quick menu can be. And you can really set it to suit your photography, your style, um, have your quick menu do pretty much anything you want. Okay, for those who've made it this far, that was a pretty long video, so I'll wrap this up quickly. I'm still getting out with the G9 II whenever I can find time between work, and I'm building a bit of a collection and getting to know the camera better along the way. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more content coming your way on the Panasonic Lumix G9 Mark II. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.